Uh, my name is Sian Singh Sherry. Uh, my talk today is going to be on friendship. We have a common view in America that Buddhism is about solitary practice, the individual meditating alone in isolation. But this is not the whole of the Buddhist teaching. Many of his teachings are about community, living in harmony with others. Not just in the Sangha of the monastics, but in society in general. So what is a community? A community is a group of people, obviously. But more than that, it's a group of people who live together in harmony. A community or a larger society are not in harmony. Things will become very unsettled. There will be fighting, war, anarchy. No one will be able to live in peace. So what is it that brings harmony to a group? The group will have harmony when the group brings benefit to all its members. If there's only benefit to some, there will be no harmony, there will be unrest. So what do we call it when people work together for each other's mutual benefit? I think we could bring this down to something that is both simple and profound, friendship. If we can meet everyone in our community as a friend, not a rival, an enemy, or even a stranger, but as a friend, then we can have harmony in our community and our larger society. The Buddha talked about harmony and community, especially with monastics, because of course he lived in a monastic community and monastics learned to live in harmony in their community, their Sangha. So Buddha gave many teachings about that in the Vinaya, which was specifically for the monastics, but also in the general suttas, he talked about monastics and friendship. In the Sambodhi Sutta, which is in the Anguttara Nikaya, Buddha talked about noble friends, the Kalyanamita. These are spiritual friends. He said that they help us to maintain virtue. They help us to have persistence in our practice. They help us to remain steadfast in virtue and diligence. And they help us to have discernment. This means they help us to see clearly, to understand what we see in light of uh, impermanence, not self, interdependent origination, and the Four Noble Truths. When you are surrounded by noble friends, you will hear talk that helps you develop virtue, persistence, contentment, and other good qualities. They will not engage in, in gossip and idle speech. In the Megha Sutta, we see what happens to someone who practices without noble friends. The monk Megha on his rounds to gather alms, he saw a, um, a grove of mangoes. And he thought this isolated, beautiful place, this would be perfect for me to practice. I can be alone there and practice really well. So he asked the Buddha, can I go practice there by myself? And, and the Buddha said, well, why don't you wait until some other people come along and you can go practice together. And they waited, nobody came along. He said, please teacher, can I go practice alone? I know this would be good for me. I'll practice while there. And so Buddha finally said, okay, go, go alone to your mango grove and practice alone. And so Megaya went there and he sat down in, in this beautiful grove of mango trees. And he found that he could not practice because he was alone with his thoughts there. And he had thoughts of ill will arise and other thoughts that were not conducive to his practice. And he realized, I can't practice here alone. And he went back to the Buddha and said, teacher, when I was alone, I was assailed by unworthy thoughts. And the Buddha said, yes, Megia, friends help to overcome that. So while we do have 
practice alone. We, we know many stories about hermits who went off and practiced for months or years on their own. We need to have a sound practice to help us do that. And we develop that sound practice by practicing first in a community with our friends. You'll notice that when Buddha talks to people, he usually addresses them as friends, even if he doesn't know them. He meets everyone as a friend because Buddha is the, the noble friend of Kalyanamita who helps everyone, who teaches when asked, and who also shows by his own demeanor and his own way of living what uh, the good life, spiritual life is, so we can emulate him. In addition to talking about friendship for monastics, Buddha also talked about friendship for lay people at great length, and there are many suttas about this. One of them is the sutta to Digajanu. This is in the Anguttara Nikaya, 854. The Buddha told Digajanu, who was a householder, many things about how to live. Because Digajanu said, how, how are lay people supposed to practice? We have to deal with money and we have all kinds of luxuries and nice things around us. How can we practice spiritual life? And the Buddha told him, among other things, that good friendship was necessary. You have to associate with good people and learn from them. Buddha told him there were four qualities that led to happiness in this life for a lay person. And you could develop them with the help of good friends. One, you must become accomplished in initiative. This means uh, you're skilled in your work and you work hard so that you can maintain your lifestyle in your household and be a contributing member of society. Another quality that contributes to happiness in this life is that you must be accomplished in vigilance. Buddha says, you must be careful to protect your wealth from kings and from thieves. We all know we have to maintain our wealth from thieves, but it's interesting that he says kings too. It seems that in the Buddhist time, kings were out to take money from other people. He also says, a thing that leads to happiness in this life, that is necessary for happiness in this life, is admirable friendship. You have to spend time with virtuous people, good friends, in order to be happy in this life. They help you in many ways. You can model your own generosity on generous people. You can model your virtue on virtuous people. So good friends will help you in all these things that will help you to be happy in this life. says you must also maintain your livelihood in tune with your wealth. But this obviously means you don't spend more than you have. But interestingly, Buddha says, not only do not be a spendthrift, but he also says, do not be a penny pincher. He says that wealthy people should not just hoard their wealth. They should be generous with others. So you should live consummate with your income. This means don't give away more than you can. It also means that if you have plenty, give away money and aid to friends, family, and the needy, and to the community of ascetics and uh, monastics. It says this is necessary to be happy in this life. He also talks about drains on wealth. These are debauchery and sex, drink, gambling, and friendship. Well, how can you have debauchery and friendship? Debauchery and friendship is when you associate with bad friends who encourage you to gamble, drink, or make bad decisions about sex, or they encourage you to hoard your wealth or to spend too much. 
So that's another way that good friends are necessary to be happy in this life. They help you to maintain uh, a good lifestyle. Buddha told uh, the lay people that there are also four qualities for happiness and well-being in lives to come, in future lives. You have to be consummate in conviction or faith. Know that the Buddha is the teacher, the awakened one, the unexcelled teacher. And of course, you develop this by developing faith, by practicing and learning that this is the way for me. You also have to be accomplished in virtue. What does this mean? This means you do not take lives. You do not take what is not freely given, no stealing, no lying, no bad sexual conduct, no illicit drugs that cause heedlessness. And of course, these are the five precepts that lay people can take. They can be supported in this by our friends too. You want to be accomplished in generosity. Do not be miserly, but be happy to give to those who need. You also need to be accomplished in discernment. This means we know how to end suffering and to abandon samsara. So Buddha talked about how friends are important, but how do we maintain those friendships? We have good friends, but we want to keep them. And we want to be good to them, just as they're good to us. How do we do that? Well, the layperson, Sigala, was uh, out one day giving um, honor to his father, to his parents, to noble people in the four directions. And the Buddha came along and Sigala asked him, you know, what's, what's a good way to practice? Is, am I doing right? And the Buddha said, you can not only practice in four directions, you can practice in six directions. You may be familiar with this teaching. He talks about um, honoring the parents, honoring children, honoring teachers and students, honoring employer and employee, honoring uh, the ascetics and holy people. One of the directions is friends. We honor friends to the north, the Buddha said. To honor your friends, you give them gifts that they need or deserve. You give them kind words. You don't speak to them harshly. Instead, you uh, support them with kind words and helpful words. You look after their welfare. You treat them as you would treat yourself. Hopefully, you treat yourself well, and you should treat others well also, especially if they're your friends. And very importantly, you should keep your word to your friends. Don't lie to them and let them down. They won't trust you if you don't keep your word. They won't stay your friend. Buddha said, well, good friends lead to good things and happiness. Bad friends lead to bad things. He said, one is not a friend. He is an enemy. If that person is a taker. Does that person steal from you? Does he give you very little but ask a lot? Does he help you not generously and happily, but just because he has to? Does he associate with you just for his own advantage? This is not a good friend. That's an important point. We often hear in uh, self-help books today that you know you need to associate with people who are smarter than you or better than you. If you wanna be powerful, you associate with powerful people. If you uh, wanna be wealthy, you associate with wealthy people and you will pick up their characteristics and they will help you out and so on. The Buddha says it's important to not just do that for your own advantage, but to be friends with people, to associate for mutual benefit, to help each other not just to get rich, but uh, to support each other in virtue and uh, to protect each other from harm and many other things. So do not just associate with people strictly for your own advantage. 
Another friend who is actually an enemy is one who renders lip service to you. We'll talk a lot about some good thing that happened in the past, but if you think about it, there's not really much else good that happened in the past. There's just maybe one thing they did for you and they keep talking about that. But they'll talk a lot about the future and good things they'll do with you, but it never actually happens. This friend who's actually an enemy will gain favor with empty words. They'll say a lot, but it never really amounts to anything. They're also never available when you need their help. It's the kind of friend who um, asks you to help them move and you show up with your truck and you help move lots of boxes, but then when you need to move, they're not available, <laughs> they're not free. So this is the, the bad friend who renders lip service only. Another friend who is actually an enemy is the person who flatters you. When you do something wrong, they say it was great and they approve of it. When you do something good, they disapprove of it. They tell you, oh, don't give things to your friends and family and to charity. Keep your money for yourself. Don't be too virtuous. Think about yourself only. The flatterer praises you when you're around and speaks ill of you. When you're gone, it's a backstabber. There's a song about that. The friend who is actually an enemy brings ruin to you. This is the person who gets everybody to gamble, gets everybody to just go have fun all the time and not do work that needs to be done, leave things undone. The person who wants you to go out a lot when it's not to your advantage to go out. It's also the person who gets everybody drunk. We've all probably had some friends like that. <laughs> Buddha talked about good friends also to Sigala. He called these warm-hearted friends that have your best interest at heart, who help you. These are the good kind of friend. One good friend is the helper or protector. This is the person who helps you. When you are inattentive, they look after you. If you're walking down the street and they see you're about to fall, they'll say, hey, look out. They won't just let you fall down and laugh at you. They help you when you're inattentive. They even protect your wealth when you're inattentive. Maybe this is the friend who comes by to check on your house when you're on vacation. A lot of us have done that. This is a friend who looks after you when you're in trouble. They don't just disappear when you need help. This friend is also a refuge when you're in danger. If you're really in trouble, who do you go to? You go to your good friend, the helper and protector. This person may even give more than you need. They're always there for you. Another good friend is the friend who lasts, the enduring friend. They keep your secrets for you. You can fight in them. They don't tell everybody. They also do not keep secrets from you. It could be harmful to you if someone has a secret they're keeping from you. If they don't tell you that uh, something is going on with them that could hurt you. A good friend will always tell you what's going on, keep you in the loop and not keep things hidden from you. This friend who lasts will also stay with you in times of trouble. They don't abandon you when you can no longer help them. They stay with you no matter what. Another good friend is the wise advisor. This person who stops you from doing bad things, gives you good advice. He also encourages the good in you. When you do something good, he congratulates you and says, oh, that's wonderful that you did that. I'm so happy for you, I'm proud of you. I like that about you.
Another good friend is the loyal friend, the compassionate friend. This person is happy when you are happy. When something good happens to you, they are happy. They're not happy when something bad happens to you. They can commiserate with you. They also defend you when others say bad things about you. So the good friend is the same in happiness or sorrow, in good times or in bad. Buddha says, the wise behold these four types of good friends and cherish them as a mother does her own child. These good friends are essential to your happiness in this life. They're essential to harmony in this life. And they help you to maintain your household. They also help you to practice on the spiritual path by helping you have a stable, harmonious life and encouraging good things in you, encouraging virtue, honesty, generosity, and so on. So friends are vital to the Buddhist path, whether you're a monastic or a householder. They're essential. Not only the teacher friends at the Sangha, like Mr. Jiru and the monastics, who can show us a good way to be, a good way to live, and display admirable qualities for us, but also the friends in our lay life as householders who are good for us and who do good things for us, who support us and help us maintain our household and happy life. Just as friends are important in our own individual life, they're important to society as a whole. If we treat others in our community and our society as enemies, then our community becomes a battlefield, not a harmonious society. So we need to meet others in our society as friends, not as strangers, rivals, or those other people that we don't like. We all need to live together in harmony. That means we need to treat everybody as friends. Now, even strangers may not be our best friend who we rely on in times of trouble, but sometimes we rely on strangers in times of trouble. I cannot even count all the people who have stopped to help me when uh, my car broke down in the night and people stopped to see if I needed help, stopped even to push my car off the road so I would not be hit. Even strangers can be good friends and can be there in times of trouble. And they're vital to a functioning society. Let us meet everyone as a friend as best we can, instead of treating everyone as enemies and our society will be a better place. Now let's dedicate the merit and remember to send it in all the directions Northeast, Southwest, up, down, to everyone, to all beings everywhere. May all beings know happiness and the causes of happiness. May all beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May all beings know the great joy that is free from suffering. And may all beings dwell and the equanimity that is free from aversion, greed, and ignorance. 